picked it up uh, at a farmer's field for $250. I believe it's a 1968 beetle uh, bug. Not a super beetle, but just a standard bug. One of the fun things I think we're going to start in the next couple of days is to see if that motor will fire up, because I'm excited to see if that motor will actually run. I did just crank it over by hand, and it seems like it's not locked up, and there's no rod knocking. So uh, we'll prime the carburetor with a little fuel, put a battery in it, and see if it'll start. And if it starts, it just, it just will let us know how far into the motor we have to go. We will remove it and clean it out, of course, but whether or not it totally needs a total rebuild or not is yet to be seen. There's years of leaves and dirt and dust and debris in there. And we'll clean that out, remove all the carpets, and throw all that away because we won't be reusing it. We can terminate that rust immediately to stop it. If there are holes, we'll have to do some sheet metal work on the floorboards so your feet won't fall through. So you're not doing the Flintstone thing. All the windows are busted out, so we need to replace all those. It appears that it originally is red, uh, but I don't want a red bug. I'm thinking we're gonna have to do something really cool, maybe with an avocado green or something in the white interior. It's got high back seats now, so we're gonna remove those and do low back seats. Gives it a much sleeker look on the interior. I think the project time on this probably be, uh, since parts are readily available, by the end of summer, we should have that thing pretty much back together again. I don't have a key for the ignition, so we'll have to somehow hotwire it until we find the key for it. It'll be a month before we even start thinking about reassembling it, at least. The fenders all have some minor denting, but that's pretty simple to do, and if it's too big, we'll just buy new fenders for it. It's, they're not that expensive. The bike, I think um, it's a piece of junk. I'll be excited when I get to drive it. Back seat was easy to remove. Didn't know if anything was living underneath it. Thank goodness nothing was there. Something jumps out of here, I'm dead. <laughs> now, there was some standing water in the floor bed, floor bottom, which tells me there was no rust holes, which was a good sign. We spent probably four hours yesterday just cleaning it up and cleaning out the interior. We removed all of the carpet, so we uh, continued to remove both the seats, all the carpeting, and most of the glued down pad. There is some spot rust, but does, I don't, it does not appear that there's any rust holes through the, the floor pans of the car. So today we uh, removed the tires so I can get access to the bolts for the fenders because we're going to do a complete tear down of the car. Other than that, uh, the next thing will be to, uh, next day or so, remove the broken windshield, start taking out the headliner, completely gutting the interior uh, with all the pads and everything so I can sandblast it, and then start removing all the fenders, the hood, the deck lid. But overall, pretty pleased with what I see so far because it doesn't look like there's major rust pockets that are going to have to be uh, you know, cut out and replaced. So very, very happy right now. They yeah, removed the fenders, everything went pretty smoothly there. Bolts weren't rusted in, they came out pretty easily. As far as the fenders go, uh, I don't know that we replaced some of them. Some of them have just got some minor denting, so we'll go ahead and do the body work on those and strip them. We removed the uh, step boards between the two fenders. That worked out pretty good. Started to remove the deck lid and the front engine hood, so now it's exposed to the weather. I took the old windshield out. I uh, basically just cut the rubber and knocked it out onto the ground. Uh, doors were a little challenging because, you know, the hinges were rusted and that passenger door did not want to come out. I had to wind up drilling out most of the bolts in the door, which means I'll have to go in and replace the nut plates that hold the doors in when I go back to put it back on. Same with the one bolt on the driver's door, I had to drill it out. But uh, doors look pretty good other than I've got to replace the hinges. And as far as stripping the car down, I'm about 90%. Within maybe a few weeks, we'll be ready to start uh, putting a coat of paint on it and, uh, and then start working on the bodywork and the fenders and the hood and start reassembling. Took the carburetor off, bought a carburetor rebuild kit and I've already rebuilt the carburetor. The carburetor is the device that uh, delivers fuel to the engine for proper combustion that atomizes the fuel. And uh, it still had fuel in it for the last 20 years, but it was all varnished and gummed up. It was never going to run. 
the way it was and it took some cleaning to get it all cleaned out. So uh, right now my total investment in the car with uh, the cleaning I'm up to about $36 in parts so far. So uh, still staying uh, under the radar because uh, my wife doesn't need to see the bills as they start rolling in. <laughs> and uh, soaking some parts right now in Super Purple to get them clean. So we're using a chemical stripping method for the paint. Uh, basically your Walmart special strip paint. Uh, I've tried different paint strippers, but I had to go for the hard, fast one that strips it in 15 minutes. Sometimes it took a couple of different applications to get the hard paint off. About 90% done. I still need to do some of the interior, uh, but we're pretty close to that. And then, of course, I'll end the, the chemical strip and, and then go for a little bit of sandblasting in some of those areas that I cannot get to easily with paint stripper. Finally took the motor out. That was pretty simple. Only four bolts hold that in. We were able to drop it onto the floor. And I'm not going to do anything with that for a while because uh, there's a lot more to do ahead of that. We took the front end assembly off. That was pretty easy. There's only six bolts that hold that in place. To get them out of the way so we could uh, drop it to the floor. Last week, uh, last Saturday, we removed the body from the frame. work, sandblasted everything off the frame down to bare metal, including all the rust. We just applied the primer sealer, which is a uh, two-part epoxy primer sealer, which should seal out any more rust from getting in the body or, or the body shell. And uh, here shortly we'll be putting on the top coat, a gloss top coat, to uh, beautify it even more. And that should protect it until it's fully assembled and, and ready to go. So, pretty excited about that. Today was a big day. We got the uh, transaxle all painted and put back together with new seals and synchro rings. And we were able to put it back on the frame and get it uh, bolted up with the axle halves installed. So, uh, the next thing will be brakes, of course. And then we were able to put the uh, front end back on, which uh, went together really well. Cleaned up. Uh, again, not much rust and uh, not much wear in the components that we painted it and mounted it back on the repainted frame. So we're excited now to get uh, the rest of the assemblies put together so we have a good rolling chassis. Well, we had a lot of fun last night. We got to disassemble the motor and trying to find a reason for this bug to be parked for 20 years and I'm still failing to find anything wrong with it. But I had to take it apart because it wouldn't be fun to put it all back together and then find out that the motor was toast.
<laughs> God damn. I didn't move any of that. <clears throat> my wrench. I know, more than that, I just screwed up my, my wrench. Is that made for that? Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Look how many damage you did. inspecting all the parts and miking them and make sure that they're all in compliance so that we can start uh, to reassemble here real soon. Finally got the engine together today. That was pretty exciting. Had to, uh, let's see, what did we have to do? We had to put new rings on it. The barrels and the pistons were in really good shape, just cleaned up. Uh, rod bearings, main bearings, of course. And then we installed case savers, which is really important on VW motors, and so that the studs don't strip out of the block. We were able to redo the heads, put new, uh, and it doesn't take valve guide seals, which is interesting. So the heads are all done, everything looks clean, things should run like a bomb when we get it started. After we got all the parts in from my VW parts supplier, we were able to put the motor together in a day. Basically it took a full week cleaning parts and reassembling and honing the barrels and measuring everything out. So. It's a 1500 cc engine with 1600 barrels on it, so I guess that makes it a 1600 cc motor. This week we finished the, uh, the assembly of the motor. I took the original tins off the engine when we did it apart, cleaned them and repainted them. Didn't need to replace any. Replaced a bunch of the screws that were there.
it going. So I did have the uh, fuel pump hooked up incorrectly at the beginning. The inlet and the outlet aren't properly marked, so I had those reversed. But after we got those done, it started to pump fuel to the carburetor. I was really skeptical whether the carburetor was going to work after it sat there with sludge for uh, 20 years. And uh, it appears that we did get it all cleaned out and it worked fine, so I was really happy with that. Started the motor up in the finale and uh, everything runs well. So we're really pleased the carburetor seems to be working good. This is probably one of the more difficult or painful things to do is sandblast all the little nooks and crannies that I couldn't get off with the stripper. Went through about three 80 pound bags of sand, had sand in my shorts and in my ear canals. Uh, the, the, the most difficult was, was fighting off the bees because as that body shell sat out here in the hot sun, summer sun, bees were, or wasps were setting up nests. We replaced the whole front clip on the bug. After careful examination, after we stripped off all the paint, it turns out that uh, I had been in a front end collision sometime in its life and someone had done a pretty lousy job of pounding it out. For $95, I bought a whole replicated front clip and uh, matched it up with a swoop on the fenders and the hood and then welded it in place, cleaned the welds, and uh, got it to fit. So, after we got that new front clip all welded on, sanded, and bodywork done on it, we were able to primer and seal the metal and repaint it. So it's painted to match the bottom, of course, but now, with it being painted, we can lift the body and put, it, put the new gasket on the pan and then match the body and the pan together. And that'll be our next, uh, our next thing. It was a little harder to put the body back on the chassis than taking it off because we were more concerned with scratching any paint that we did on the underneath side. So uh, we screwed in some eyelets into the roof rafters and used pulleys and then lifted the body up high enough that we could gently set it down on the body, on the chassis. So uh, one of the things I wanted to do to this bug when we first bought it was I wanted to put a, a retro sliding rag top in it. Two ways to do that. One is to harvest one out of an old bug or buy a kit online from a company that makes them. And so I bought the kit online. They, they did give a template. Uh, we had to modify the template to make it fit right. <laughs> Cut it out with a jigsaw, worked out very well. But with the body work and everything, it'll look like a factory job.
Yeah, so we painted the bug today. Yeah, so with the body painted and then the uh, all the other non-visible areas painted, we can start to do some minor assembly on the on the body itself. No runs, bugs, but no runs. Some little gnats or flies flying into the paint, but they'll be able to be sanded out. So I cleaned up the steering wheel and the steering column and repainted it using an epoxy white paint and to save money of course. And the key switch uh, had no key for that so I took it to a uh, local loft shop and had a key made for it. The key fits the door so we're pretty fortunate with that. Then we installed the steering column and hooked it up to the gearbox. gas tank out it still had fuel left in it from over 20 years so needless to say it was varnished pretty bad uh, the uh, fuel sending unit was no longer able to work so I did harvest another one from the wrecking yard that is in good shape cleaned out the fuel tank put a new kit in it for the uh, fuel sending unit So after the steering column was installed, we re-ran the wiring harness from the engine compartment back through the body into the, uh, the trunk area. So we insulated the inside of the bug today using a foil-backed roofing rubber tape that I bought at a local uh, building supply store. I actually saw this uh, being used on other bugs in the past. It's inexpensive. It's about $16 a roll. And it took about three rolls to do the entire inside of the bug. It started with the, you know, the, the floor pan and then the back where the carpet is and the package tray. And uh, it's very sticky, sticks very well, and uh, it looks like it's going to do a really good job. Of course, when we sandblasted the entire bug, we removed any sound denting that was there from, from the factory. It was quite exciting to hear the engine start. No leaks, no drips, although we did have to adjust the timing a couple of times to get it to fire properly. The carburetor seems to work real well again and uh, it roared right to life and quite pleased with how it was running. I was able to put it in gear and move it a few inches with the clutch and uh, since I don't have any tires that hold air right now, I really can't drive it anywhere. Once the engine roared to life, I felt like I was having way too much fun for an old man. To install the uh, sliding rag top, we had to line up the securing holes in the back bow that doesn't move. We had to drill about six to eight holes and attach the screws to hold the back bow on.
in the instruction pamphlet it says you might want to be left to a professional and I tend to agree with that. I struggled with that for four hours to get that fabric taut enough so that it looks like a professional installation and I think I did a good job but for the average Joe that is a real problematic area is stretching the fabric and getting it to stay over the bows. So we painted the fenders today. A lot of body work involved. I've got about four hours in each fender. Uh, the biggest challenge was suspending them from the ceiling so that I could paint them properly inside and out. Things turned out very well. It was a beautiful day for painting early in the morning. Very pleased with the body work and how the paint flowed. So the doors were painted shortly after the fenders and the doors came out really nice. Again, a lot of body work. There weren't very many straight panels. I did manage to bogger up the driver's door. It came out very nice. Once we get all the new rubber and the windows and everything, the doors will come out very, very good. Interesting enough, the, uh, the farmer I bought the 68 bug from went and purchased another bug for bug parts for his own and it turns out it's a 68 as well. So I offered him money to buy parts for my bug. I needed the rear quarter windows and the rear windshield and the speedo which uh, was faulty in the bug I bought. And uh, so he gave me a screaming deal. All the parts are in good shape, no scratches in the glass. All the glass will get new rubber and cleaned up, of course. Installed the fenders today, and one of the most difficult parts of the installation is making sure that the beading seats correctly against the fender and the body. I struggled more with that than anything else, but the fenders all fit good. We installed the doors. Um, I was able to get most of the old rusted bolts out that I had to drill out to remove the doors in the beginning. And uh, those that I didn't, I drilled out and re-tapped with the proper tap. So I was able to get them all lined back up again. Uh, originally, the door hinges were frozen shut. And I had to use a little heat and finesse and oil to work them free again. But now they work very well and uh, fit very well. This evening I managed to install the padding kit for the headliner. Once we cleaned the bug off and we sandblasted the interior, we removed all the existing padding. 
there's an online reseller that sells the padding kit. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't come with a lot of instructions on where the pad goes and how to fasten it to the car. So through trial and error, we found a good uh, headliner adhesive and uh, it stuck fairly well and I think it'll be uh, a good addition to the headliner once it's installed. The final piece to be painted was the hood for the bug and uh, the reason for that is I didn't have a hood that actually fit the bug until near the end and uh, I spent probably pretty close to seven eight hours of body work on the hood I did have to cut and, and uh, in a few places so that it would drape properly over the front of the bug and it did have quite a few dents and I probably have uh, six to ten hours just in body work and making it smooth enough so that we could paint it. It's an original bug hood, uh, which is nice because it does fit the hinge area. The paint came out nice, still need to uh, cut and buff on it. For the $250, I can screw up a lot of headliners. Firstly, there's no headliners made for a bug with a sliding rag top. So I had to use a standard bug headliner and modify it to fit the sliding rag top. The whole project took me about four hours. I'm very pleased on how it came out. There's a, some small imperfections, but overall, I give it a B and uh, I'm really pleased on the outcome and saved myself a lot of money in the meantime. We started with a rear window, of course purchased all new molding to uh, get a good seal and uh, it went really well. Very difficult in that this rubber fits extremely tight, which is nice for a good seal, but it made for a lot of aggravating uh, minutes to get it to uh, wrap around the window frame.
the uh, quarter windows all have new molding on them and they went uh, right in, no problems in selling those. Just trying to find the screw holes was a little bit of a problem. Uh, the windshield, however, was another matter. After a devastating first window broke, and I still suspect there was a flaw in it because I know I didn't break it. Oh, I just broke it. No, just admit that you broke it. <laughs> <laughs> just admit it, that was your fault. It may have been, you didn't know what you're doing. It may have been a couple of too many beers at 11:30 at night, and I may have slapped the rubber a little too hard. But I think, obviously, there must have been a fracture in the corner there that I propagated when I smacked the corner. I can't. I can't accept the fact that I broke it. So the front windshield uh, it took us a little longer to get it in but it fit really well. And after knowing some of the tricks about lubricating the, the rubber, uh, we, I was able to get it in and it fits nice and snug, it seals well, and it looks good. That's the main part. The carpet kit we got is a uh, salt and pepper, meaning black with white. It has the uh, woven fabric around the edges. Pre-planning the layout of the carpet certainly helped and took a lot of frustration out of the assembly. Uh, the hardest part of the whole thing was just gluing it down and suffering with the glue fumes. Overall results, really positive. Looks very, very good. Can't wait for uh, the rest of the interior to show up in this next week and the interior will be brand new. So it'll be a very, very nice car when we're done. When we bought the bug, uh, someone had mentioned that they had redone the interior before they had parked it and, and it was obvious the interior hadn't seen a lot of wear, but because it was weathered, we needed to replace it. When I removed the back seat, we found the original upholstery underneath the new upholstery. 
uh, which was uh, interesting. It was all black. Obviously something we were not going to reuse. I knew when I bought the bug I wasn't going to have high back seats. So I removed the headrest assembly on both the seats. So I watched a video on how to install the upholstery on the seats, but it didn't really tell you how much foam you were going to need. And I bought uh, two different types of foam from an upholstery supply shop and, and some hog rings and installed the interior and quite pleased how it came out. Today we installed the new tires on the bug. They turned out really well. They're the correct size. Everything fit well. The old tires were the original tires that had been sitting for more than 20 years. They would hold enough air so that I could drive it in and out of the garage. And that was about it. When the interior kit came in, it came with the door panels. We chose a two-tone color, gray with off-white, and bought new door panel clips and receivers for both the doors and the back. They uh, were a little difficult in that you have to line them up, and when you put on the armrest into the, into the door, it became a little challenging.
So what you see now is uh, about a 99% complete bug. Our the bug was wasted space. It was ugly. It was a piece of junk. But now, it's pretty cool. It's the bug of my dreams. I can't wait to drive it. Wilson likes it too. So welcome to the After Bug Restoration Show. This is where we answer some of the questions on the YouTube video. I saw you insulating the floor. Did that help heat or did you do the ducts as well? Uh, to be quite honest with you, um, I have driven this bug since the total restoration in minus temperature degrees, but it still took about 15 minutes of driving to get the cabin temperature up to a, uh, a comfortable level. I don't know what to expect from the heating system of a, of a bug. I will tell you this, though. At uh, 5 to 10 degrees during the winter time, it was enjoyable after about 15 minutes of driving. So I don't know whether the insulating helped it or not. Uh, I really didn't know what to expect. How much did the restoration cost? After we tallied everything up with the cost of the bug and the tires and the upholstery, we're just at about $4,000 in total cost. And that includes the, uh, the, one of the most expensive features of the bug, which was the sliding rag top, which after freight cost was just around 700 So without the, the cost of the um, rag top, you're probably in around the 3200 But I wouldn't do the bug without the sliding rag top. So 4000 What bumpers did you fit in the end? Well, you know, the stock bumpers on the 68 were not that attractive to begin with. So uh, my uh, parts supplier in Boise hooked me up with a really nice set of extruded aluminum bumpers. Very inexpensive, at running at around $90 a piece. You can buy these aftermarket brackets for 68 and uh, later bugs. They give it the early bug feel. Very nice quality bumpers at a very reasonable rate. The carpet. So you put in the floor. My question is, do you make it or do you buy it? There's so many interior companies today that make uh, interior kits for the bug. Of course, uh, TMI is the, the uh, premier builder of bug interior kits. And I just ordered the interior kit that I wanted, which came complete with the carpet kit. Uh, I decided to have the sewn edges versus the uh, fabric over the edges, which looks a little more authentic. Fifth question is, how long did it take? As you probably noticed in the beginning of the video, I thought I could get this whole thing done in about three months. Uh, 13 months later is when we actually finished the bug. Uh, there were a lot of uh, factors, of course, in that is the, uh, the sliding rag top took six, six to eight weeks to get to me. And by the time it arrived, winter had set in, and I was not able to do a lot of the body work. Uh, also, uh, the filming crew that we had do the bug restoration, I was on their timeline during most of it, and it took a lot more time to uh, to film the whole bug restoration than it actually took in rebuilding it. Where did you get the rag top kit from? You know, when I first bought this bug, I wasn't going to restore it unless I had a rag top. I wanted something unique, 
and I uh, Googled uh, companies that sold a particular type of product, and and one company came out on top, and it was a company called SlidingRagtops.com, and they actually have a kit for the VW Bug, and uh, I purchased that uh, the kit from them, gave them the color of the fabric that I wanted, and uh, again, it took uh, a little longer than I anticipated, but I'm very, very happy with the outcome. Okay, here's here's this uh, guy. He's in desperate need of help. Can I borrow some tips from you? What should I do? I'm a newbie with this. I have little experience. You know, it doesn't come uh, overnight, of course. Um, I've been uh, doing car restorations now for more than 30 years. Start off with little British sports cars. Uh, this particular bug... I uh, was sitting in a field, and I'd been uh, seeing it for many, many years and wanted to do it. And after getting involved in it, I uh, I got a little more than I really anticipated. But it was well worth the effort. Uh, you just have to dig in and do it and not be afraid to spend the extra time and money and hard work. But at the end, make sure that you do a a good job and that you take the time. Watch a lot of videos. Uh, but nothing replaces time behind uh, doing the body work and sanding.